Welcome back. We're getting ready to get started with our first match of the tournament, uh, Something Cheesy and Rose Guard. Uh, they're getting set up right now. We're about to do the draft. So uh, without further ado, let's get in there and see how that's going. There's everyone in the casting room, and Paul is helping them out, explaining how each of the different elements are going to go today. The, they'll have a coin flip that'll decide who's go picking first and who will be playing first. Right. The, coin uh, the winner of the coin flip gets to choose whether they get first draft, meaning they get to pick their heroes or villains first, and the, uh, or if they get first turn, meaning they would get turn order tokens one, three, and five. Mm -hmm. So you either get to go first, you either get to act first, or you get to pick your characters first. So it's going to be an interesting toss-up to see whether you have a preference of uh, going with known characters or getting to act first. We'll be interested to see which one. Um, while they're figuring that out, uh, let's talk a little bit about the characters. If you look, get a top-down view of the map, you can see that there on the left side of the screen, you have all of the uh, characters you can play as. Omnitron, the giant rampaging robot, there in the middle, kind of dominating the space. Yeah, I've, I've taken a look at these miniatures. They're painted absolutely beautifully, really meticulously done, great hex bases on there. Yeah. Um, they're really well, look really great from the bottom. A little hard to see from the top, but, <laughs> but they're great when you look straight at yeah, yeah, and we'll have lots of good shots of them throughout the tournament today. Um, but yeah, all the characters are, are ready for picking, and um, it sounds like they've got just a couple more minutes of explanation to go. So yeah, there you can see a great shot of the miniatures. You can yeah, see they them. just look fantastic. I yeah. love seeing them all arrayed like that. Mm -hmm. um, Tachyon with her little dust bowl that she's creating. Um, <laughs> it, it just looks fantastic. And uh, Unity and Citizen Dawn that can bring other characters in, they each have miniatures too. So sometimes the board starts to look really crowded. It's, it's actually really exciting. Yeah, there's a lot of exciting things going on on the board. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what characters people pick and uh, what uh, th that and that'll shape a lot of the strategy and the tactics mm -hmm. of how this first match goes. Yeah, I was, so. I was talking to uh, Happy to be here earlier this mm -hmm. morning. They said that they don't really have favorite characters. They actually want to pick second so mm. that they can base their choices off of what their opponents are doing. That makes sense. Um, so they've really studied every character so that they'll feel comfortable with any strategy. That's a really strong way to go. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people have preferred characters and like strategies mm -hmm. that they come here with something specific in mind they're intending to do. But having an open strategy where they're just ready for any Thing. I mean, that's that's a strong way to start. Right. So, well, it looks All like right. we are ready for the coin toss. All right. Out in the casting room there. Okay, and so, are we ready for the coin toss? Yep, I'm ready if you are. Uh, let's do it. All right, cool. All right. Yeah. All right, we're ready for the coin toss, guys. So your heads and your tails. The team that wins, remember, you pick either uh, first pick or first uh, draft. So, yep. Can you hear me now in the lobby room? Okay. So here we go. Coin toss. Good. That was quite a toss. Ball. That's quite all right. And that is tails. Yeah. All right. So you guys get to pick either odds or. It's quite all right. We're known for making board games, not tossing coins. First draft. Thank all right. Goodness. Cool. So yeah. You guys are first turn. All right. So it odds. looks so like right off the bat, um, we've got first draft picking right off. Okay. So. Um, now we've I got believe Rose Guard is getting first uh, turn, so something cheesy is picking their characters first. And with something cheesy, we've got Andrew, Dara, and Justin right, there yep. at the table. And with Rose Guard, it looks like Greg, right. Alexander, and Max. So let's go ahead and pull up the draft screen. You can see that Justin has picked first for something cheesy, and B uh, Justin has picked up Bunker right off the bat. Yeah, that, that's a great first choice. We've seen a lot from Bunker in the last couple of days in some of the trial matches. Right. Uh, we, he's got so much firepower. He's a really good place to start your team. Okay. All right, so... We've got Bunker and Citizen Dawn on one team and Legacy on the other. So it looks like we have a team leader character. Uh, both uh, Legacy and Citizen Dawn are team boosters in their own way. So we have uh, two team leaders on the two different sides. And we've got a, a heavy firepower character with Bunker. It'll be interesting to see what they pick uh, as a counter to that. And it looks like we've also got Citizen Dawn. Uh, Citizen Dawn can bring out those other citizens, like we were talking about all, all right. those other miniatures. We might be seeing oh. them on the board. So we have Legacy and Baron Blade on a team. That's a great matchup for various thematic reasons, but also mechanical reasons. They are a really solid team when they work together. Oh, wait, between Wraith and who? I was thinking Wraith. Yeah, they're trying to make their third choice now, trying to round out their team here. Uh, 
It seems like team dynamics and the way the characters play together can be really important with how oh, they absolutely. play. Oh, right. absolutely. Let's see. The Wraith. All right. So All right. Bunker for pa firepower, Citizen Dawn for uh, team boosting, and the Wraith for utility. Um, I'm interested to see how this plays out. Um, the third pu pull for Rose Guard. Let's listen in here if they have a strategy they're planning on. It seems like some teams will talk about it out loud, and other teams don't want anyone to hear what they're thinking. Oh, he's trying raw. Okay, cool. fantastic. So we have firepower on both teams. You have utility on both teams. Oh, this is this is looks like it's going to be a really solid match. Okay, so. Um, so now we should be able to get in here and see what's going on. Ah, great. So we've got a great uh, shot there of the characters arrayed against each other. Um, they'll get their turn order tokens now, and uh, in, laid into the map, we specifically have where the different characters start. Um, and each character is going to get a panel that has a couple of the different things for each character on it. What right. sort of things are they going to see on their panels? Uh, they're going to have their basic powers on the panels. They're going to have their various cards and stuff that they have access to. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're getting those right now. You can see that the Citizen Dawn character is going through an extra stack of cards. Those are her citizens that we talked okay. about that she can bring out. Um, so they're all getting their various abilities right now. And um, so let's talk a little bit about the matchup. Um, if you look at the various characters we're, we're comparing here, um, like we said, we've got team leaders on both sides with Legacy and Citizen Dawn. Those are great um, boosters, and they have a lot of uh, both defensive and offensive abilities they can bring to bear. Uh, Ra and Bunker are absolutely solid uh, attack sort of characters, and then Baron Blade and the Wraith make great team boost, I mean make uh, great utility characters. They have a lot of things that can uh, negate their opponents, some debuffing abilities. So it's a very balanced set of characters. I think right off the bat we're not seeing any sort of um, team dominance in terms of who has more firepower, who is going to bring more uh, team synergy to bear. I think this could be a very good match for our first match here. Now, Christopher, can you talk a little bit about how the tournament is going to work differently than the game? Because in the game you, sure. you've got different objectives and villains, um, but here we've got two teams of heroes fighting each other. Right, absolutely. Um, or, or villains, and that like both Citizen okay. Dawn and Baron Blade are villains. But so these are all characters. Um, th th some are heroes, some are villains, but they're all going to be working together. And um, the so each of the matches is going to go to three incapacitations. So whichever team okay. gets three incapacitations first um, wins. And then it is a double elimination tournament. So losing a match for the first time doesn't knock you out of the tournament. Okay. Um, if we can pull up the bracket, we can see um, the the matches as they move through the brackets um, can the, here, here you go. So if we're looking right now at Rose Guard and something cheesy down there in the third bracket slot. Whichever one of them wins will go on to the next slot in the primary tournament bracket. And then there will be, at that point, um, after, this, after this round of all these matches that are going on simultaneously, it will generate a secondary tournament bracket that will have um, essentially the teams that lost their first round but are still okay. in the tournament. Now, they haven't been eliminated twice yet. Right, right. Okay. And anybody, no, anybody that's been, that lost, loses two games is out. But if you win... You if you lose one game but then manage to win your way up the secondary bracket, you can end up in the semifinal rounds. However, oh. if you are in the semifinals as a team that's come from the secondary bracket, uh -huh. you have to win two rounds. You have to win two matches against a team that was from the primary bracket in order to proceed to the finals. So uh, that gives the people, if you've lost a round, you've got a little bit more work ahead of you to get into the finals, but it's still possible. And uh, with good strategy and a little luck of the dice, you might make it there. Don't so. worry. If, if it's hard to follow, we'll walk you through it as we get there. <laughs> I think it'll be great. So let's see if we have the match live here. Good. So I'm looking at some of the cards that they're picking already. Uh, we've got a, a tabulation where I can see that in advance. Uh, Ra has picked Flame Spike and Staff of Ra. I'm very excited about this. Flame Spike is one of my favorite cards for Ra because um, let's go ahead and actually pull it up here. The um, Flame Spike card allows Ra um, to make an extra attack whenever he makes an attack. So oh. Ra can get up to a range where he can see somebody, make an attack with his basic attack, and then for free, because he made that attack, Flame Spike will go off and he'll get to make a three die attack. Three dies is not, not necessarily overpowering, but it's an extra free attack that he didn't have to take an action to do. Okay. So um, getting that Flame Spike out there is a great call for Ra. And then, of course, his other card, the Staff of Ra, is going to give him bonuses to that. And it um, looks like the characters have also chosen the order that they'll be going in. We're going to see Legacy go 
go first right. over on the Rose Guard, uh, followed by Bunker on something cheesy. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the both big characters, um, they're going to be generating a lot of tokens probably in the yeah. first round, do you I, think? I, it's interesting to see. Well, Legacy right now is set up with uh, Galvanize and Inspiring Presence, which are his two big yeah. token generation cards. So we absolutely will see Legacy um, handing out tokens. Even if he doesn't take any specific actions to do so, he'll be generating them just by existing. Um, whereas Bunker, uh, Bunker right now is currently rocking. Well, we don't know. I don't have what cards Bunker is using yet. I think he's still selecting, so I don't have that in front of me. Um, but we do see um, with everybody else. Uh, but like Baron Blade has got his Saber Battle Suit, which is giving him extra defense, and his Fission Blaster, which gives him a, a long range, really solid attack. So now these are all these cards are all in addition to the power cards that each of the characters have innately. Uh, so. These are going to be extra attacks and extra defenses, extra elements that each character can have in addition to what they've always always have. Is that right. correct? Absolutely. So they they have their innate powers and they have the card the uh, the abilities are printed right on their character uh, panel. But then they also have each character can have two power cards in play um, at a, any given point in time. So we will see. There are a couple of characters that can have mo more than two powers, but we don't have any of those in this game. So we shall see. Looks like they're already rolling for movement. Super speedy legacy. All right. Oh, you're ready, so go. Go ahead. Yep. Roll three. Take the medium, so it's going to be four. It's the white super. Oh, shoot. That's your total sign. Normally, we'll see only the white dice being used for movement rolls. The red dice will be for the attack rolls, and the blue dice for the defense rolls. Yeah, that's correct. Um, so when you're looking at the dice here, you'll be able to tell what we're rolling for and, and what those numbers are. So now Ra, unfortunately, rolled a one for his movement. So Ra only has a move value of one for this first round. However, he can always take a sprint action to get up into range. And if we look at the top-down shot, we can see that Ra is starting off... Um, in, uh, let's see, it looks like Ross starting off in the hills, the very far back. He's the one that's at the closest to the top of the screen near the round one marker there. Okay. So he doesn't necessarily have a, he doesn't have a good line of sight there, but his turn is three. Hopefully Bunker moves up a bunch, which is unlikely. Bunker's not a very fast character. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But um, everybody's still rolling movement, so the setup is, with the movement being rolled, the setup is almost done. Everyone's got movement. Everyone's got powers. You can reveal your powers, put them into play there. All right, so they're revealing their power cards now. So now, for the first time, so we knew what their cards were going to be, and that's why we were talking to them about it. But this is the first time the opponents are going to be seeing what, what their opponents are going to be using for their primary advantages. Um, Looks like Citizen Dawn is um, already bringing out the citizens. Uh, yep. Since she comes into play, as soon as the game starts, the citizens are already there. Right, so she'll have Return with the Dawn. It's going to give her um, an extra character, and um, hopefully we can get a shot from one of the uh, auxiliary cameras that can show us specific which citizen she picked up. It looks like we're starting Legacy's turn, yep. starting the game here. So let's hear, let's listen in and hear what he chose for his actions. All right, so Legacy's handing out some attack plus one tokens off of his surge action, and then he's going to go ahead and move up over to the hill. So he's kind of drawing the fight over towards the volcano. Except, uh, Unfortunately, he's blocks. trying to galvanize his teammate Baron Blaze, so but he can't raw. see Baron Blaze. Right. So. You get your well, no. you're raw. You get two you get plus, two plus <laughs> Okay, <laughs> not complaining. <laughs> So the, uh, he tried to he considered giving some uh, defense tokens to Ra, but Ra has an ability called Hot Headed that whenever he would gain defense plus one tokens, he instead gains attack plus one tokens because Ra doesn't care about defense; he just likes attack. Legacy rolls a new movement; it's a movement of five, which is a nice, solid move. He can get anywhere on his next turn probably, and it is time for Bunker's turn. Now Bunker only has a movement of four, which is actually pretty high for Bunker, but um, he's right off the bat using his token generating card. Now he can't see Citizen Dawn, but he doesn't need to for his ability. So each of his teammates gain a defense plus one token, which would be handy, and he gets an attack plus one token. And I'm interested to see what he does with the rest of his turn here. Now, off his auxiliary power source, he should have gained 
uh, during the surge uh, phase, he should have gained an attack plus one token and an aim token. Um, and I don't believe he did, so I think that he's kind of wasted that auxiliary power source, unfortunately. But that is the, up to the player to keep track of which cards they're using. So he's gotten a move out there, it looks like. And uh, yeah, he's moved up a little bit, and he's given out some tokens, but he is playing kind of close to the chest for the first round. Oh, the first round? First, first turn. Put it around Dawn or do it back to a Dawn Bunker or something? That's, yeah, that's not a good question. Because Bunker doesn't really like to move very much. He might just sit in the flames and not care. And we can hear <laughs> yeah. Raw sort of uh, thinking I, I, about I, I, his turn, I'll where I'll he's going to take me. places. Yep. All right. There's a blazing tornado on the board, so those are all hazard tokens. That looks like a hazard token. Can you tell me a little bit about those yeah, tokens? Yeah, so let me pull that card up. So Ra has just put out a card called Blazing Tornado. Um, and the Blazing Tornado card allows him to put a token down, which he just did. And that token, we're going to go ahead and pull that card up on the screen now so you can see that token, um, that marker generates hazard spaces in, within radius 1. So essentially, right now, right off the bat, there are hazard spaces underneath both Citizen Dawn and her citizens that she's pulled out. So if they don't move on their turn, they're going to... Um, yeah, it's true. He does not have his line of sight to there. So he could put it one way, but he could not actually put it specifically there. He'll either need to put it one closer to him or one to the right, essentially. Yeah. So and that's what we're talking about right now. Right. So pa Paul's out pointing out... Line of sight. Right. So Paul's pointing out that he can either put it a little bit closer or a little bit off to the side, but he doesn't have that quite that corner. So this yep, line so of sight good. is actually something that's different between Sentinels and the Multiverse and Sentinels. Tactics. Right, Sentinels and the Multiverse doesn't have any sort of line of sight because sure. there's no uh, concept of positioning or where characters are in space. Like It's, it's, it's just a, a card game played kind of, you have to imagine where the characters are. Whereas this game, positioning and line of sight and things like that are much more relevant all right, to the point that they're a, lot, a big portion of the game. But anyway, so Ra, for his first action, has put out his Blazing Tornado, um, and his second action is to... Well, actually, no, his first action uh, was to sprint. The second action, the Blazing Tornado came out just on its own. And then his second action is to dodge, and he has that. And he's rolled for movement. It looks like he got a six, so he might be moving quite a lot on his next turn. Well, he has the ability to do so. We'll see if he actually takes that. He's okay. got a pile of attack plus one tokens, so I anticipate him trying to be mostly directly offensive. Yep. So, Citizen Dawn has moved. It needs to be careful where she moves because that thing that generates hazard space is all around it. Um, if you look at a top-down shot, you can see that ha hazard token is right there next to her. Um, that looks like that pillar of fire there, and everything around it is everything that's adjacent to it. Yeah, it's good. Her movement there gets her out of the way of that tornado. And being in that jungle is a really good position to maybe take some cover as well. Oh, absolutely. They can't see her. So right now she can see Legacy and she can see Ra, but neither one of them can see her. With my Radiant Strike. All right, Radiant Strike. Which is no, she comes with her attack. Out of cover. Who are you attacking? Oh, I am in cover. No, you, you are, but you can see out. You can see out. Who who you, who you oh, you can attack when you're in cover? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Gotcha. So she has a range of one, two, three, four, oh, five yeah. okay. to Legacy so because of the elevation. Her range to Ra's even further. So only fives and sixes so will hit. Oh, now, hey, that's fine. Uh, that's a pretty good roll for that. Yeah, the, the three and the five of the Automus, and four doesn't make range, but two sixes are coming in against Legacy. That's a great attack. That's the first attack of the game, too, uh, other than the Blazing Tornado, which isn't an attack, but it was offensive, so... Um, Legacy rolls his defense, and he blocks one of them. But that other piece is going to come through. And that's our first blood, so for the Rose Guard, round one, match one, first blood goes to Citizen Don. I will take a dodge. Yep. All right, so we're getting a lot of dodges. We're getting a lot of defensive actions from both teams. So I'm curious to see. Um, in general, what, we, what we've seen with Sentinel Tactics is that an offensive strategy, a kind of head-on assault sort of thing, tends to work best. But with both teams playing defensive like this, um, we might see we might see how this how this goes. Um, and now. Are we and it looks like, okay, so she has, you can see, well? right, they're taking their turn now, and you can okay. see that's Blood, Sweat, and Tears. It's a, th a team of three citizens that takes one hex. Mm -hmm. Now they're starting and in... Go through, if I go through the hazard space... Right, she's starting in a hazard space, so anywhere they move other than back is going to attack them. Their best move is to move over into the jungle <laughs> and up if they want to avoid the hazard space, but... Um, yeah, coming right through that jungle seems like the best move there. That's the only one that is yeah. not going to get them hurt. Oh, oh so that's a dead hack. Have to go around that. Oh, yeah, there we go. That keeps him safe. Okay, movement. Looks like the citizens are occupying the forest there. Yep. And again, they are one, two, three, four, five. 
away from legacy. So we need to do that. Period. Negative token held by each target. They don't have any. Legacy does not. Okay. So three. And, and then all right. And Dawn now uh, we can't see what the actions that are taking. Power of adding it. one die to all their attack rolls. She's not her own ally, though. So. I'm well, playing oh, sorry. Yeah, no, you're yeah. doing that. Yeah. Yes. Right. So I get four. Uh, so the citizens are going to be taking an attack. We won't be seeing what their actions are taking on the screen because they aren't a regular character. Okay, they have yeah. their own separate actions. Oh, but um, they're going. So like let's. Uh, we can pull up here on the screen for you, so you can see the citizens' blood, sweat, and tears card, so you can see kind of some of the stuff oh. they can do. Well, I'm going to. Let's get that. Here it is. Token for that, and then a roll of right. Four. So go ahead and pull up on the screen for us uh, the Citizen Blood, Sweat, and Tears card. You can see there that they can either give out so debuffing tokens, five. which is great, but it looks like they're going to be making five. that extra attack, and they're getting extra dice because of Citizen Dawn. Three. All right. So the three goes away, and the one and two don't make range, but it's another six going at Legacy, I believe. So. Let's see that defense roll. Yeah. So yeah, you've got to use it right away. Oh, this, I just gave ability, it to you. Yeah. <laughs> so she did give them a, a defense minus one. Uh, so unfortunately, gets to only roll two defense dice. But he did roll a six, so he managed yeah. to block all of that. So we've had a pretty negation action. sort of Correct. round so, so far. But this has been a good amount of action for the first round. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's really great to see the, the characters really coming out there and using the abilities. All right. All right, Baron Blade's turn. Well, for Citizen Dawn, this was what's what you Okay. No, okay. I, I missed the... Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Okay. I probably did it out of turn. No, you just so, did it. I, I just okay. missed it, just that's all. So, start of my turn, power up, switch out Vision Blaster for Displacing Teleporter. So he's getting his Teleporter, and because he switched um, out a card, I there we go, he's going to tell us. Card, I can gain any other attack plus one or a defense plus one. Yes, I'm going to gain an attack plus one. Oh, good, so Baron Blade's <laughs> pulling a <laughs> That's attacking. That's a lot of movement, Baron Blade. Oh yeah, he can move wherever he can see, he can teleport, and wherever he lands, he pushes people around. So he could start pushing people towards the volcano if he wanted. Is that correct? Correct. He does have line of sight to a spot there in the jungle. He could well, drop in right behind the citizens and push them around. Um, but I think he might want to get a little further than that. From anywhere in your hex to anywhere in the target hex, as long as that doesn't pass through cover or uh, somewhere that is higher than either of the two hundred and fifty feet of sight. So. Okay. Looks like he's trying to choose a position here. Okay, so he sprinted up to there. From there, he can't... So way over there, measuring from this edge of the hex to that edge of the hex? Since you have one hex from this edge and one from the other one, they block line of sight. Okay. Because you can't trace it right along the edge. You have to have... You have to have a little bit of a gap with that. Okay. Paul's pointing out the absolutely correct uh, uh, line of sight rules one. about working through edges teleporting. that are blocking line of sight. Okay. Uh, and so he's moved, he's teleported, and that teleport drop... It's not quite what I wanted to do. But it's pretty good. He's considering if he can drop there, he can push raw or you push uh, teleport citizen so Don. Uh, when I teleport, I get to push everyone adjacent to me one hex. There we go. So citizen Don's getting pushed into the into the blazing tornado. And that push doesn't affect the citizens. It does. Oh, it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They are they so are we character. Be able to see them get moved as well. Right. So yeah, we will see them get moved, but they're interrupting the action real quick just so we can see where the blazing tornado goes. So you roll the dice and then you can choose to spend them one at a time before she rolls defense. So, oh, right. um, since she is so Ra's going to make his attack, and as we said earlier, Ra currently so is sitting on quite the stash of four attack plus one tokens. So even though it's not Ra's turn, because his tornado is being put into play, right. he gets to roll for it. Right, that attack, those, uh, and that attack goes off right there. Now the twos go away, because the auto misses on that are two and five. So three and four is what's left, but it sounds like he's going to use some attack plus one tokens. So you may re-roll the Oh, there we go. It's true, he uses the Staff of Ra, and um, as we can see on the screen here, the Staff of Ra is a card that gives him the ability to reroll some auto misses. Let's go ahead and pull that Staff of Ra up on the screen, um, and uh, we will be able to see that pretty soon here. Maybe not. Uh, it looks like our card's down, so don't worry about that. But um, aim is the I mean, only thing you have to, to use it before. before. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still going to have to re-roll that dice eventually, yeah. anyway. So. Well, right, but I thought right. it was you use the attack plus one token, yeah, and can, then after all the dice are rolled, you can I confirm that rules question? Do we? You have to uh, spend your tokens before you remove bottom misses. That's correct. All right. Okay. So yes, technically you do. Okay. No, that's fine. Right. So don't re-roll the auto misses. 
Sorry, all the re -roll, the auto misses will all be re-rolled at the same time um, once they've added more dice, because that way if he rolls any extra auto misses, they're all going to be re-rolled. That's actually in, in favor of Ra in this case, because he's going to spend even more turns, or even more dice attacking. Looks like he's rolling a few more. Three more, in fact. Wow. The five goes away. Well, the five is an auto miss. So, so the five is an auto miss, and that two from earlier is an auto miss. Um, That's still and the two is removed, damage. right? So uh, the two is removed because he can. The sapphire lets him reroll each auto miss once. The two rerolled the two, so it still goes away. But he's got four, four, three, three, one, one. Going against Citizen Don. So that's your three sixes. Three sixes. Your three sixes. And then my defense plus one token for another one. Yeah, so he's going to for sure get another six in there. Perfect. There you go. So she's got four sixes, so she blocks four of that attack. However, that attack was a pile of dice, and. She's still going to take damage from Yes, that. absolutely. <laughs> so two points of damage are put onto Citizen Dawn. And, and right let's remind folks, this is the tornado. This is not a character. Right. This is, well, it is, it is Ra's attack, technically, but it is coming off of the Blazing Tornado. Sure. So that Blazing Tornado that Ra put out has proved excellent, specifically because Baron Blade worked together to push his teammates, uh, his opponents, into his teammates. Yeah, but we're, we're still in Baron Blade's oh, yes. turn here. We yes, he has one more action. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Like he's considering his options. Okay, so I'm going to use slash and burn. Oh, okay, he's using his basic attack. Plus two. That's true. So that's five. All right. Looks like they're looking for an early knockout of Citizen Dawn. It's a really strong choice. She'll lose as citizens, and she'll lose her <laughs> her uh, um, luminous leadership. She has a card out in play right now called Luminous Leadership that is helping her teammates out a bit. Um, we'll see if we can pull that up on the screen. Luminous Leadership shows us. There's the roll for the attack for yep. slash and burn. All right. So you got one, one, three. Mm, that's not great. Citizen Don can probably pretty easily block um, that. We'll see. Are you going to choose to use any tokens? Do go, go for it. it. Sure. Do it. Yeah, they want to get that knockout as soon as possible. So they're gonna, he's going to spend all of his attack plus one tokens to roll two more dice. High numbers? High numbers? Two more twos. But still, and those that's are, five attacks. Those are both auto misses, unfortunately. Oh, they are. And okay. so... It was three one one, and those defense dice block all that, no block problem. So all. Citizen Don right, manages go. to survive so quite the onslaught from uh, yeah. Baron Blade there. Yeah. Alrighty. We still right. have the Wraith's turn coming <laughs> up. Hopefully, we'll last. see her uh, uh, give Citizen Dawn some of those healing powers that she's got. So, Wraith doesn't have any healing powers. Oh. Wraith Maybe cannot heal. I think you are. Wraith cannot heal her teammates, but the Wraith. Great if she could. It would be nice in this case. That's true. So the Wraith is going to take her turn now. Let's see what goes on with that. Mm. Looks like she's considering switching out one of her power cards. Right now, the Wraith is using, um, let's see, Stun Bolt and Targeting Computer. Targeting Computer lets her shoot across the field. It gives her a significant increase to her range, which is excellent. And Stun Bolt is a debilitating attack that does some damage, but also gives attack minus one and defense minus one tokens. Um, so I don't believe she is going to switch her powers, which is good. So for her Surge phase, she's going to gain an aim token. Yeah, that's a Stun Bolt attack there. You see that whenever the attack resolves, um, she gets attack minus one tokens and defense minus one tokens. And it's a decent attack. It rolls four dice. It misses on five and six, which is kind of a uh, Which means she does problem. have to be a little bit closer. She, yeah, she absolutely has to be closer because the most she can make range on that is four. Um, but it's a fantastic attack, and it really, uh, the, the negatives from it, those negative tokens, uh, especially since the other team is doing a good job of massing tokens between Baron Blade and Legacy. So. And they are amassing them quickly, but they're also using them quickly. I That's, like seeing that. Yeah, no, it's good. They're not hanging on to them. They're going for a quick takedown, which is what you want to do, for sure. All right, so that card can go away, and we can look back at what the Wraith is going to do for her actions. First action is going to be move. She's going to move up to there. All right, first action. And then I'm going to sprint to this position. Okay, so she's moved and sprinted. So she spent that two-thirds of her turn just getting into position. I think she had quite a low movement roll she did. first, so yeah. she had to use those. Yeah, she unfortunately she only had a movement of three, so she's stun bolting, and I wonder who she's yeah. dropping that on. At Baron Blade. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, she's so that way, real close to him. And that way all of her dice can make range, so she's just hoping to not, for a change, we're hoping to not roll fives and sixes. Right. So we got four dice, and it's an aimed attack, which means that all of the high dice... So the five, six, there's no, the five goes away, but she it's does have a four here. Right, so she'll get three fours against Baron Blade. Yep, four, four, four. All right, and so Baron Blade now. That is what we wanted to see from that stun bolt. Right, and at the end of it. Four defense dice. That's right. So Baron Blade, because he's using his battle suit, has a defense of four. But we'll see if he can roll it well enough to block all three of those fours coming through. 
Oh, Ooh, he can. Yeah, Beautiful. Yeah. That was a fantastic <laughs> defense roll for Baron Blade. He takes no damage. It doesn't matter, though. Stun Bolt... I mean, it does matter. He doesn't take any hit points of damage, which is great. But the... Um, Stun Bolt still does give the attack minus one and the defense minus one tokens. So the attack wasn't fully in vain. It did at least do some debuffing against one of their strong characters here. Hopefully when something cheesy's next character plays, they can deal out a little bit more damage to Baron Blade and maybe get, get a takedown. Maybe. At this point, there's a point of damage on Legacy, and that's it for something cheesy. They only have managed to put one point through. Mind you, the other team's at about the same place. We're This is a pretty even first round. There's been some attacking, but there's been a lot of negation of the very things they've been trying to do. We're back around to the beginning of round two, and it's Legacy's turn. So let's see. Now that the Caped Crusader can see a lot of where he's going for, uh, let's see what Max does with Legacy. Uh, surge. Team get attack plus one, because I can see both of you. Yes. Right. He can see all his teammates, so he gives attack plus one tokens to himself and all of his teammates. So everybody gets some bonuses. Right. And what Paul is pointing out in the room right now is that because Baron Blade has an attack minus one token, a plus one token and a minus one token cancel each other out, and he's left with no tokens, which in this case is better. Sweet. Thank you. And then let's. So it's you get to see right. some of those elements Sprint of the team working and together to help each other. Uh oh. All right, so Sprint is your first action. Yep. He's going for his basic attack, talking it looks like. Fucking dog. Fucking dog. All right. <laughs> totally not the word I thought. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, his, I, I want to point out they're saying talk with right. a T H there in the room. All right. Yes, that's correct because uh, Legacy's base attack is a sound effect of the punch that he makes. Fuck. Force damage. Six one. Yes. The TH. With the TH. I want to point that out. Six, it's important. Right. For all you kids in the audience. Speaking of people in the audience, any of you watching along on Twitch, if you want to know um, more about like what's going on in the map, at greaterthangames.com, we have a link to the map uh, right on the, in the news post in the lower left-hand corner of greaterthangames.com. You can click on the page there and see the very map they're playing on. That way you can get a better idea of what the landscape looks like. So feel looks free like to take Citizen a look at that. Dawn has just taken quite a bit of damage. Yeah, that's a great attack for Legacy, considering that Legacy is not normally <laughs> an offensive character. He got right up into the action, and Citizen Dawn is on her last legs. However, it is Bunker's turn, so Bunker might be able to lay down some cover fire for her. Right, so this time he's actually taking advantage of his um, auxiliary power source that he forgot last turn. Alright, we'll see where we're going on here. seeing quite a lot of bunching around that tornado. And then for my second action, I'm going to use my grenade launcher. What's going on? And then... So grenade launcher? Yes. All right, so he's vertex. moved, and he's Very dropping nice. a grenade, grenade there. on a Legacy. Now he's attacking oh, it's hitting both Baron Blade and Legacy. That's fantastic. Vertex, yes. right. so rather than an actual character yeah. that he's targeting. Right, so the grenade launcher and a few other attacks in the game are vertex attacks, meaning they hit a point between three hexes. Okay. So it's an area attack, and so when he rolls these dice, the same die roll that he's going is going to be hitting all, th uh, all three of those hexes, which hold both Baron Blade and Legacy. Now he's chosen to use his aim, and that means he's aiming at one of the two. Um, so where, here we go, we've got six, five, four, four, which is great. I don't believe any of those are auto misses. And he's used his aim token, and he's using an attack plus one token to roll one more. This is gonna be a pretty powerful attack here. Both of my attack plus ones are at Yeah, well, those are not rolling. Yeah. The aims is just the one target, is just one. the attacks are both. The attack is against both. Right, I had that backwards in my brain, okay. Oh, sorry, the attack is not against both. You were right. Before. Attack plus oh. one aren't against both? Yeah, the attack plus ones only go against one. Right, so yeah, all so of my attack plus ones, ones are going to right. legacy. Cool. Okay, so he's using all of his attack plus one tokens and his he gets aim. It looks like they're all on legacy. Oh, no, so... He gets five fives, right? Is it, the six isn't an auto miss grenade launcher. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, the ones that do, so you don't have any auto misses here. Perfect. Oh, very nice. That's very exciting. So if you look at these dice again, these are the ones, so we, against one of them, it's going to be a bunch of sixes. Six sixes, going against six sixes against, against Legacy. Wow. And then like and a then six, five, six, four, four, five, going six, against five, five okay. four, four. All right. <laughs> How's that? Right oh, right, because he's got extra attack plus one tokens against Legacy. Okay. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you can see here on the card, grenade attack. launcher, underneath right. the tie there, it so says vertex area attack, which means it right. has there. And it says it doesn't require line of sight, so Bunker can lob grenades right. over okay. so obstructions. Sure. So. All right, so five, six is going now against Legacy. Now we're going to see some of these defense rolls. What, what does his defense roll look like? 
He blocks yeah. nothing. nothing. All right. Legacy so goes down hard. That, that, that grenade knocks one out Legacy point. entirely. Wow. That is one point for something yeah. cheesy. Bunker is set up. Yeah, that's a fantastic first attack. And he still, still has attack going against Baron Blade. Baron Blade might take all that damage, too. we, we we'll got to see. see the roll. 6 5 4 4. So he can't knock out Baron Blade. But he can hurt him a lot, and in fact, he wow, that's a wow, great defense roll. Yeah. He only, he still takes one point of damage because one of those dice sneaks through, but he manages to block a lot of that. And that the first incapacitation going to something cheesy is going to make a, a big difference in the rest of this game. I'm really surprised. I really, really thought Citizen Dawn was on the ropes, but Bunker pulled it out, took out the first knockout, taking out Legacy. Yeah, it's true. Unfortunately, it is now Ra's turn, um, or it's about to be Ra's turn as soon as uh, Bunker finishes the movement roll. Uh, Looks like he got a three there. We'll see. I get four dice. Got a, he took a three. Oh, he took a three. Okay. Yeah, he took a three. Okay, excellent. Oh, okay. It looks like there's a bump die there, which was confusing. So. So. All right. Um, Sometimes we have to trust the players. Ah, uh, not often. Um, <laughs> They are now talking about the fact that I'm yelling at them every so often, but it's okay. We're moving on. Uh, so now it's now Ra's turn, and Ra is going to be moving some things. What would be a right? good thing for Ra to do here? One of his characters is gone. Um, sure. Baron Blade may be on the run here with some of those attacks. So Ra's way back in the backfield, far away from everything. So he's going to need to get in. And then I think I recall he didn't roll a very good movement roll last time. No, it's true. His Rao's movement is pretty abysmal. Oh, no, wait, no, it's a no, six. It's no, really it's really good. good. It's really, really good. good. It was sorry. somebody else that had an abysmal roll. But so <laughs> Ra is going to be able to get in there. That's we'll see. Good for him. Oh, he's going to switch something out. Okay, so he picks up the Blazing Tornado, so the token goes away. But he's got Inferno, which is an area attack. I think that we're going to see some more area shenanigans over there. Um, how close are the Wraith and Bunker to each other? Very close. <laughs> Very close indeed. And you think he's going to attack Bunker rather than trying to finish off Citizen Dawn? I think he can hit both. Okay. I think that he can hit Citizen Dawn and the Wraith, but probably not Bunker without attacking his teammate. Uh, wait, 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 Baron Blade. No, Let's see, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, yeah, he is gonna have to get Why are we talking closer? about finishing off Citizen oh, Dawn? Citizan Dawn's on his team. Or, or, no, no, he's not on the other team. Okay, I'm so confused. I'm okay. so confused. <laughs> um, Ra is going to want to attack I got you. Okay. Citizen Dawn still, it's still gonna be good and okay. the Wraith, uh, so but not Bunker because he's further away. But we'll see what he chooses. Radius by four. So if I get on this hill, one, two, three, four. Yes. Only it'll be three because of the elevation of yeah. the hill. Now, okay. will his origin so attacks just, so then affect we'll his teammates? One, two, as my first action with movement. So one, two, three, four. Oh, five. origin attacks don't count elevation. Oh, they don't. Yeah. Okay. So uh, start from here. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. I will then use my second action to act to cast Inferno. Okay. For an origin attack, area attack radius one, my uh, range four, so one, two, three, four. You're going to cast it right there, so yep. he's going to hit all of those. So he's going to hit Correct. Dawn, Baron Blade, and Bunker. Bunker. Oh, Bunker. oh, so he is, in fact, attacking yes. everybody on the other team, including, including Baron Blade on his own team, but. He's, he's I, I think hoping he's that it's willing, worth it. I think he's willing to risk Baron Blade if he can take out Wraith and Citizen Dawn. Yeah, here we go. And I think Baron Blade currently, currently Baron Blade doesn't have any sort of extra defensive tokens. Oh, that, that was a terrible roll, especially because a two is an auto miss. Now he does have still oh, this. He's gonna use the, all of his tokens there. Right. Well, he's got to pick a specific target for it though. Wow. That that's a much better roll. And then the five and the two get re-rolled. I believe, because he still has the Staff of Ra. He does, he does have the Staff of Ra, so the two and the five get re-rolled. Yeah, he's got that. Which is... Okay, so the plus one, so the, the six and the four are going against Wraith, and one of the auto misses is going against Wraith. I don't know which one of those ones that was of these extra three attacks hit. I believe it was one of the six and the four go against Wraith, and four one of the ones re-roll. One of them goes for the Wraith. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You get to re -roll with All right. <laughs> All right, so... There's no auto-miss on those re-rolls. Okay, so you assign which one goes where. Oh, yeah. All right. There we go. Okay, so 64111 is going against everybody in that area, and then 643 additionally is going against the Wraith. Oh, that, that looks like quite a lot of damage. It is out a there. lot of damage. So. Yeah, we're going to uh, see a lot of defense rolls here. 
So Baron Blade's going to roll his defense to see if he can survive his teammate's attack. Unless it says otherwise. I think Ra is hoping that he can. I think Ra is hoping that he doesn't kill Baron Blade. <laughs> Now, if Ra takes out his own teammate, yeah. will that count as a knockout for the other team? It will count as a knockout for the other team. However, it looks like he blocks. Take one. Block, block four and take one. Right, so you only take one damage. So Baron Blade does take a point of damage, but you know, that's a pretty best case scenario in this situation. <laughs> I think they're happy they didn't kill each other. Uh, I think they're happy that their, their team's about to, I think, potentially get two kills off this attack. Um, Bunker's in danger. Wraith is probably, probably toast. So... Uh, so Wraith blocks one of the sixes and one of the threes. All the defense dice work. However, that's still... I, I think that's too much damage. It's still five points of damage coming at the Wraith. That would take her out. All right, and that is an incapacitation right off the bat there. So Ra gets a knockout. All right, and so we have an incapacitation. Oh, that's it looks like he's um, using one of his defense tokens to try to roll another defense. Can he keep himself alive like this? Oh, he might be able to, but it seems unlikely. And it's going to block one. But it still wipes me out. How much damage do you take then? Um, five, exactly. I rolled... Oh, five. Oh, yeah. so you don't, yeah. so you don't get pushed. You get killed, but not pushed. Okay. So, I lose oh, my movement. Take over on damage yeah, then you get pushed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, so that is a knockout for Ra. And, and you get to hit a point knock. Let's, let's knock down Legacy. Let's lay him on their side. Legacy and the Wraith. Just there we go. So Legacy is currently now incapacitated, and the Wraith is incapacitated. So that's a, t a point for each. This has been a really even match. That said, we still have an attack coming at Bunker. And if we look here with the overlay, Citizen Dawn's in pretty rough shape. Um, You still, still die. die. Mm -hmm. oh, but you yeah. How much? I get pushed? Yeah, yeah you don't. Oh, I don't. You only die. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, All so right. what they're talking oh, about is, is the push that would come from the Blaze Inferno attack. No, it's the, from the Inferno attack, yeah. So the um, if you get hit for more... If, there, if you get hit for more damage than you have hit points, you get pushed for the extra amount. So as we're seeing here on the screen, Ra, uh, uh, yeah, Ra hit Citizen Dawn for more hit points than she had left, and so any extra points of damage resulted in movement. Okay. Um, so and this is Bunker's defense roll. Right. Bunker blocks all of it, it looks like. Oh yeah, Blood, Sweat, and Tears go away because... Yeah, so, blood, so, so the, citizen, the extra citizen that Dawn generated cannot survive without Dawn on the match. So that is two incapacitations out of one attack for Roseguard. Um, something Cheesy still does have one incapacitation. So this match is still anyone's match, although Roseguard has a pretty commanding lead at this point. Yeah, we are, we're going to see Citizen Dawn pop up pretty soon here after Ra's turn is over. Now, when someone comes back from an incapacitation, they only get one power instead of two. Is that That's correct? correct. That's correct. Uh, when you stand back up, so it is now, so Ra just ended his turn, so it is now Citizen Don's turn. She stands up, she gains all of her hit points back, and she picks a single power. And, and I think the best thing she's going to have is uh, her citizens, so she can bring some of them back in. You can't tell what she's chosen there. Cool. There we go. Alright, you're gonna stand this is just figure out how to do this. Cool. Alright. Thank you. Uh -huh. Rejuvenating. Gotcha. There's all the hit points there. And it looks like she is bringing out a citizen. Alright, so that? she's going right off the bat for a turn at the dawn. She's liking to make sure there's a target rich environment for her opponents, it looks like. Okay. Um, hopefully, a target rich environment that doesn't include so. her. Yeah, hopefully. We'll see. Um, uh, she has to be adjacent, correct? Yeah. And it looks like she's put out the same one. She's still going with blood, sweat, and tears. So she still has the negative tokens they hand out and the attacks they do. So what is Dawn going to do with her own turn? She has three actions, and she did not pick up a power card that gives her an action. So she might want to take an aim and fire that attack off and then go for a dodge, perhaps. Um, Baron Blade is pretty close to her. Baron Blade's close to her and is down three. So if he, she aimed and then fired at Baron Blade, she could potentially take him out and then and that still... Be evening up this game. That would even it up. Um, okay. All right. Let's listen in and see what she decides to do. So I'll aim. aim. Oh, there you go. Okay, I'm going to aim for my first action. Yes. Then I'm attacking Baron Blade. Sure. It's like clockwork. Radiant Strike. There we go. Five. Are you using your aim token? Yes, I'm going to aim with that. Radiant Strike and Baron Blade. All right. 
Oh, pop okay, one die uh, fell out of the cup, so we had to re-roll that. Our three and five. Oh, that's oh wow, that's all a lot of three of us. Nope, right. she's got a four in there. So they all become okay. fours. No, the auto misses are removed and then aim goes in. So she has one four going at Baron Blade. That was a, a very unfortunate roll. I was certain that was going to be a commanding strategy there. Uh, and Baron Blade blocks it, no problem. Okay. Now I'm gonna gain a dodge from my and she's picking action. her dodge action, so she's got a little okay. defensive. And, and now we we're back around to Baron Blade's yeah. turn. So and don't the citizens take a turn? Oh, it's true. The citizens do get to take a turn. They got their movement Five. there. Okay. And, and then blood, sweat, tears. They have three actions. Yeah, that's right. So again, let's pull up that yeah. blood, sweat, and tears okay, card so, so we can Baron look Blade at what that does. Um, we should have it on the screen here in a moment. She's handing out some that, minus tokens to Baron Blade. So we can see here that yeah, the, 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 uh, first, the first action that says unlimited. And unlimited means you can use that as many times per turn as you have actions if you want. So she picks, she picks up an unlimited. Uh, she gives out the attack and defense mm -hmm. tokens to Baron Blade, and then aims and then makes the attack. So she's still trying to knock out that Baron Blade. It's a better roll there. Yeah. Yes. Now the auto misses are three, so that doesn't matter. Um, the yeah. one cannot make range on Baron Blades. So the one goes away. Did she use the aim on that? Oh. I think she did. So I think oh, four she, sixes. She, that's right. So it's four sixes. So Baron Blade actually might be in trouble here. He does have four defense dice though, but he still need, he needs to roll two sixes and able to not get knocked out by this. We should be seeing him use his defense minus one as well that the, the citizens handed out. That's true. So he should be only rolling three dice potentially. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. that's wow. terrible. Hi. What so a not only knockout of Baron Blade. And there we go. That's one incapacitation. So that's two for each team. And she gets to push Baron Blade a space. So let's see where she puts him. Um, I would go this way. That way? Yeah, to get him closer to Rob. You get one push? Okay. Yeah, one push. All right, Rose Guard, evening up the match. Um, right before we move, so now it is back to Baron Blade's turn. So Baron Blade stands back up and Baron gains that's still all worth the points. Point. Oh, oh, yeah. How long is out? That was three. That was three. Okay. Oh, I aimed. That's right. All right, so Baron Blade is back up to, oh, okay. on his feet, and he's picking a power card. Let's see what uh, he picks, because at this point, he's got to do something special to turn this around. It's even. It's right up down the middle, but nobody's taking any damage. And on, on the fifth turn of the second really round, Wraith is about to get up. Um, hopefully, we'll see some of Wraith's tricks come out and be able to do some. If she gets well. a turn at this point, Baron Blade could potentially do some sort of overpowering attack. He's very meticulously placing his hit points there. I like to see that. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're down to sudden death, and looks like Baron Blade is going to pick... Citizen Dawn and Bunker are at full health. They're at full health, and Bunker's super strong, and Citizen Dawn's not bad either. Okay, so... Oh, 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 what's this? Oh, okay, hold on. He's only going to be able to pick one power card. Ah, he's picking his movement first, which you can absolutely do, so that will hopefully see. Oh, he can't move much at all. All right, so he's still pretty close to the I'd like to see him pick up a fission blaster on fire for. Oh no, he's got a regression burst. This is going to be exciting. <laughs> I think we might see. Let's see. What sort of damage can a regression burst do? Regression burst doesn't just do damage. It also it is a one shot. Means you can only use it once. And go ahead, we'll pull it up on screen. You can see. To a character, that character returns all of their active powers to their hand. Wow. Uh, it's pretty powerful. Well, who is he going to aim this at? So well, it's a, it's a, it's or originates from his health and hits everything in radius two. So he's going to be hitting his teammates with this too. Oh, I think it's worth it. He's going to move to. Let's see where he moves. Sure. Sure. Action two is to aim. Oh, and it doesn't matter. He can't hit his teammate because legacy is currently down and raw is too far away. Well, that was, so that was a good move. Yeah, it was a very good move. I guess my aim token on it. Uh, who now? It's an area attack. Okay. Origin zero, radius two. Who so, are you oh, who am I aiming at? Bunker. Bunker. Okay, yeah. Bunker. So, this can do damage because he's rolling four uh, die so and four dice, zero, and two. one and two are his auto misses. So. so you hit. Hmm? I'm just curious about the timing on effect. When it deals damage. Okay. Cool. All right. So here we go. Just you want on the board yes. Yeah, but Bunker's already planning to take some of this damage. He's. It's. It's. I mean, depends on the roll. At this point, it's down to what the dice do. We're. We're not going to see a knockout off of this attack, but it's a. It's a great setup for going into the next round. Yeah, Bunker with six hit points. Like you have to take a couple hits sure. at it. <laughs> what are your auto misses here? One goes away because uh, it's an auto miss, right. but so we have six, five, four going at Citizen three Dawn three and three sixes going, going at Bunker. Oh, wow, that's, that's pretty good. And then a six, five, four, four going at Dawn. Okay. 
All right. Going at dawn. So Bunker is rolling his defense and oh. rolled oh. no sixes. So Bunker takes three damage and loses both of his active powers. Currently, Bunker's active powers are Auxiliary, Power Source, and Grenade Launcher, and they're both gone. So this kind of sets them back a bit. Oh, he's rolling one more defense die. Didn't do any good. Well, he can't block one of them. Yes, yes. Take three damage. Um, sorry. Nope, three sixes. He yes. aimed at Bunker. I'm sorry, I forgot okay. where the Six, aim five, four is going at Citizen Don. No. Oh, all right, so now Citizen Don is hoping to, to block all that so that she doesn't take the damage. However, yes. I don't think that's going to happen. Let me stand up, Andrew. Okay, sorry. Okay, using my dodge to defend. Oh, she's using her dodge and a defense. She's defending at six, five, four. Both are defending at six, six, six. Oh! Not a great roll there. Yep. So he's got three fives, and that'll block two of them, but the six still sneaks through, and that means that she does take a point of damage and lose her powers, which gets rid of blood, sweat, and tears. Wow. All right, that was a great move by Baron Blade. Um, so now Bunker doesn't have that, I mean, uh, Baron Blade doesn't have that ability anymore. One shots are cards that you use once and they're gone. Until, for the whole game? Nope, just until, if you get knocked out and come back, but for this is the whole game, because at this okay. point, one more knockout wins this game. So it's, yeah, I don't know that we're going to be able to see Baron Blade get knocked well, out Well, with and as hurt back. as Bunker is and as hurt as Citizen Dawn is, the Wraith is going to stand up and try to take somebody out, but if Legacy comes back, and especially if Legacy uses his flying smash attack, he can attack um, multiple targets. Oh, well, he can, most likely to be he can attack multiple down. targets with Flying Smash, but that's Legacy's turn. Let's see if okay. Legacy even gets a turn. Wraith is back up. Um, so Wraith is back up, and we should see her on the overlay regain her health pretty quick here. Yeah, she's there she is. And there we go. She's only going to be choosing one power here. And it looks like what I can see around the corner behind my casting booth here is that the matches that are out in the area are wrapping up and finishing up. So it looks like we're right in time with everything moving along smoothly. So, so should I aim a razor ordinance? Yeah, a rain razor ordinance is a lot of time. Stun bolt and attack. Stun bolt and attack and... I like to hear this because from the table talk it sounds like they've actually got specific strategies they've discussed in advance, which is really good. Basically, I think what they're talking about here is they need to get a knockout yep. in Wraith's turn. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, so... And Baron Blade's a natural choice since he's right on top of her. Um, if I were him, I would fire that stun bolt, pick, take an aim token, and then I'll throw an aimed razor ordinance at Baron Blade. Let's see what he does. have to attack Baron Blade. Yeah, because the, so the stun bolt will also give a defense minus one token, which will help with help making sure attack. the raise ordinance makes. Four dice. All right, so here comes the attack. Fives and sixes are auto miss. All right, unfortunately that five goes away, but four, three, two will get through. So let's see what Baron Blade has in terms of defense against that. Baron Blade, I believe, is not using his power armor anymore because he got knocked out. It's true. So he only has three defense dice. Um, it blocks two of it, but one gets through. So I take one. Yes. And then he gets. He gets an attack minus one and a defense minus one. So he gets two negative one tokens, and that defense minus one token is going to come at a moment. Now Wraith has two actions left. Let's see what he's got. Um, I'm going to aim. There we go. This might be it. It depends on the roll still. Oh, absolutely, but that's what it's down to. Their strategy is impeccable. All right. Sounds good. So I get four dice. Yeah, there's the radar, razor ordinance. Yep. <laughs> Grammar. It's dice yes. coming. It is dice. Okay, <laughs> fine. One auto miss. One in three auto misses. One in three the auto misses. Rolls two. Oh! oh! oh. And this was it. That, that could have been a knockout, but instead it's a complete flub. It's a two coming at Baron Blade. Baron Blade only gets to roll two defense dice. He, he um, could take a damage from it. It's die. possible. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not going to knock Baron Blade out. That is not a knockout. We're yeah, back well, around to Legacy's yep. turn in a second here. And it was a really good try. It, it was a very good try. This is this is still anyone's yeah. match. It's really I mean now Baron Blade and Citizen Donner are at the same amount of hit points, and Legacy is going to be angling to take advantage of that. I'm certain. So this is an excellent first round here, first match here for the uh, Sentinel Tactics tournament. It's very exciting. All right, we're back up. We're at turn one, and now. Legacy stands, up. Legacy stands back up. He gains all his hit points back, and he gets to pick a power. There we go. He's rolling Beautiful. For his movement. Okay. All right. So it looks like he's got a movement of three, which is fine. But he picks a power card, and what did he pick? He picked fly flying smash. Man, if I didn't know better. I think they might be able to hear me, but they can't. And flying smash is going to let him move as part of the attack. Let's 
while he's talking about that, we can go ahead and take a look at exactly what that card does. You can see here on the screen, Fly and Smash, yeah, he can move up to four hexes, so he'll get an attack in there, and it's going to hit everything within radius one. So I'm wow. interested to see where he drops that. Oh my gosh, those what sixes are beautiful. Yeah, but the sixes are auto misses, so it's only 5 3 2. Bunker rolls his defense, blocks the two and One's three, but the five gets through, so that's a point of damage on Bunker. Oh, he's so close. And Legacy had, had to move first to get that in. Here's the rates. So I block one and take two, is that correct? Wraith takes two damage from that. Oh, is that... Oh, that was only one damage for Wraith. I'm sorry. That's okay. And so we have... It looks like that's right. the end of Legacy's... There's another attack from Legacy. Good. All right, so the black. So Bunker survives. All right, so Legacy's turn is over. And Bunker. Bunker is kind of uh, going to hope to keep himself alive here. Oh, I was trying to go with... Go. Uh, at six for Legacy. All right, now it is Bunker. Who's at one minute? All right, so Bunker's only got one hit point. He's, he gets turret mode, so Bunker... That's a great idea for Bunker. Bunker is going all for broke at this point. He gets three actions, so we should see a third action pump up, pop up there on the overlay for Bunker. And then and, and turret mode he gets lets him to use, use all of his power cards. All of his, all of his attacks. He has all the attacks that Bunker has in hand okay. can be used in this round. So we're getting close to the end of the time limit on this, but it doesn't matter. We're down to one incapacitation each. And if Bunker doesn't knock out Baron Blade, then I think that we're going to see Ra easily set Bunker on fire. So. I'm going to use my flat cannon again. All right, so the first action is going to be the flat cannon on Baron Blade. So... And let's see, Bunker and Baron Blade are standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, so the only thing he has to worry about is auto-misses. Oh, now, got quite a few auto-misses on there. Yeah, well, the auto-misses on the Black Cannon are two and six, so just a one and three comes through, and so Baron Blade... So you get Flat Cannon there on his uh, character panel, you can see. Although, but that's a great defense roll for Baron Blade. Baron Blade is holding on for dear life. Uh, however, Bunker still has two more attacks, so let's see what he gets up with. And if he directs both of them at Baron Blade again, we might, might see a knockout. It depends on what he picks. I'd like to see a snapshot micro missiles, which is what he's considering, and I'd like to see a grenade launcher. Yep, there we go. Grenade launcher he could use to hit both the um, Baron Blade. Yeah, he's nope, he's, he's only at the one. With the grenade launcher. Yep. So here we go. Grenade launcher. Ones and twos are our auto misses. Those what a great oh, it's roll. Six five four three. Baron Blade's got to roll really well to survive this. And Bunker still has an action left. Right. Baron Blade rolls 4-2-1, is going to block one Not of those and take enough. three. Baron Blade has one hit point left. He is Bunker on has one attack left. And so we've got, hopefully we see the snapshot micro missiles. There we go. And he's going to roll. Five dice. Yep. And you can see there, snapshot micro missiles should I be coming up on screen. I can't see how this wouldn't work. Uh, he's, he's got a lot of auto misses on that attack. And in fact, he rolls a couple of them. So he's got 6-5-4 going against Baron Blade. It is all up to the dice. Baron Blade has three defense dice. Here we, go. Pretty high rolls. Here we go. We're holding our breath. It looks like they're either face they know it. Six, four, blocks it. The five gets ah, the through. One gets that through. is incapacitation <laughs> for Baron Blade. That is team victor victory for Team Something Cheesy. Fantastic job. That was an excellent match. That was everyone's right up to the end. Now, well Rose done. Guard isn't to fully out of it. They're going to move over to the secondary. That was a great game. I like to see the sportsmanship. They're all shaking hands. Everybody had a great close game. That was anyone's. Beautiful. That was a great match. I really enjoyed seeing all of the attacks coming out there. Oh, yeah. But really a lot of variety in what they were doing. That's very good. So that was a fantastic match. I, um, we're going to have a few more matches in a minute here. We'll come back. We're going to take a really short break. But that was a great match. Everybody did a great job. I could not be happier with this as a first match of the game. How do you, of the day? I'm, I'm really excited, too. Come back and join us this season with some of the next matches. Uh, we'll be here all day until the finals.